welcome friends welcome back to the Canada info hub channel your one-stop immigration channel everything about Canada life in Canada and everything immigrating to Canada it's a beautiful new week and it's me your girl Wodo so if this is the first time you're actually seeing this video I would say thank you and subscribe to this channel I'm just saying it slowly subscribe to this channel and then the next thing you should do is scatter the like button <laughs> destroy the like button that's my usual intro anyway welcome back to this channel and um, I'm super happy and um, I'm super blessed and I hope you're doing well too and I hope you are okay and everything is okay with you this week don't mind the chaos around the world just focus on the things that are positive you know just focus on only positive things because if you're thinking about the chaos in the world it will drain your energy so just focus on only positive things around you anyway so today's video is an exciting one yes i need to announce the winner of the giveaway and uh the winner of the giveaway is called mohammed patel the last name is patel yes so he's the one that won the giveaway and i'm going to send him an email and we'll work out things from there and i hope he attends alias Frances. he gets to learn french very well and and it will help him um, improve his comprehensive ranking score he has a very good score but he just needs those points to actually get um, an invitation to apply so congrats to you mohammed it's um i don't know which country you are from but i know that you'll be able to make good use of this scholarship congratulations to you so um for those who didn't win please bear with me <laughs> i'll do another giveaway very soon you know it's just one person thank you for understanding anyway so today is good news and it is going to benefit only people who came to canada as visitors and are currently living in canada as visitors so if you recall i did a video two weeks ago where i talked about visiting canada studying in Canada for four months and getting some certifications that can make you get a job and in that video I also mentioned that once you get a job offer you have to leave Canada to apply for the work permit and then come back to Canada as a work permit holder but the good news that was announced yesterday by the IRCC is that those who are visiting Canada and if they get a job offer with a valid labor market impact assessment instead of them leaving Canada they can remain in Canada to apply for a work permit so it's a very good news it's a wonderful news I'm excited because I know that there are so many people who got stuck in Canada because of COVID-19 and they should be able to use this opportunity to get jobs especially in the industries that are looking for workers yes I'm saying this now especially in the industries that are looking for workers industries like caregiving industries like um agriculture information technology and um construction hospitality of course you know hospitality is affected by covid but employers are looking for people so any visitor who is in canada um, and still has a valid visiting visa it is good news for you um search for jobs that have labor market impact assessment apply for work permit and you will remain in canada um for the duration of your work permit so that's a wonderful news out there and as a result of that i said i was going to share tips on getting a visiting visa of course you know these tips will not be useful in this period because we have covid19 it's going to be useful um once covid19 is over so i just have to share the tips the thing is getting a visiting visa to canada is even the most difficult yes it's the most difficult in fact everything about immigrating to canada visiting canada is very difficult and visiting visa is very very difficult even if you have a sibling a cousin a relative a friend living in canada willing to send you a letter of invitation it is very difficult to get a lot of people can testify to that i even have a friend who invited his sister and she was denied three times until a consultant had to handle her case and she got the visiting visa before she came to canada so that's just to tell you that even if you have a relative living in canada a sibling living in canada and the person invites you there's every likelihood you might not get the visiting visa the parameters of you know giving the visiting visa is almost the same as that of study permit because you still have to show 
enough proof to the visa officer that you are well established in your home country and these days even people who are even well established they find it difficult getting visiting visa because of precedence when i mean precedence the people who had gotten visit visiting visas before from let's say nigeria you know i'm from nigeria so i have to use nigeria as an example so what's the precedence people who have gotten visiting visas before from nigeria they came to canada most of them overstayed some decided okay after overstaying they will claim asylum and of course you know all these things they take all this data once they realize that a particular country is abusing visiting visa they try as much as possible to start you know making sure that they don't get the visiting visas so even if you're well traveled let's say you've traveled to the uk you've traveled to the usa you've traveled to france you've traveled to most of the european countries and you try to apply for a visiting visa they will still look at those parameters of are you really well established in your home country do you have um a net worth that will make you return back to your home country do you have what it takes to make you return back to your home country if you don't have what it takes to make you return back to your home country they will give you uh, a refusal to your application so before you go ahead to start thinking that getting a visiting visa might be the easiest thing for you to do um, especially since you know that the other immigration pathways has its own requirements and might be difficult especially if you know you don't meet the requirements and you think okay getting the visiting visa might be the best thing for you you just have to assess yourself assess yourself in all the parameters the parameters like do you have a relative living in canada if you have a relative or a sibling living in Canada, what's the likelihood of you getting a letter of invitation from that relative? If you can get a letter of invitation from that relative, then that's number one step. Number two is the relative must be doing a good job. Yes, the relative must be doing a relatively good job because if the relative is on social welfare, there's every likelihood you might not get the visiting visa. So ensure that your relative is doing a good job in Canada, the relative is paying his or her taxes, the relative is well established in Canada before you start requesting for a letter of invitation. Number two is you can also get a letter of invitation from um, businesses. So let's say you have a very fantastic business in Nigeria. I'll use an example. Let's say you have a good fitness center in Nigeria maybe five branches in nigeria and you just want to see what it's like having a fitness center in canada you can you know send an email to one of the fitness centers in canada like maybe good life fitness center to discuss with them um, and tell them you want to visit their facility to see what they are doing and see what you can do to improve your own facilities in nigeria they will send you a letter of invitation and you can use that letter of invitation to apply for your visiting visa. The third way of getting a letter of invitation is um, actually through conferencing. And that's what most people do these days. You know, they go online to search for any conferences that are actually happening in Canada. Um, such conferences, of course, with a duration of maybe let's say one week, two weeks conference. Um, I don't know. The, the, I'll leave a link of where, the website where you can go to search for conferences. But of course, you know, COVID is happening, so there are most of the conferences are actually virtual conferences now. So even if you apply, I mean, there's every likelihood you'll not get the visa because most of the conferences are virtual conferences. But once COVID is over, you have to go look at the website and see any conference that is suitable to your, let's say, career path or your business. For business people, if you see a conference that is um that aligns with your business you can apply to the conference and then they will send you a letter of invitation to attend the conference so um uh, that's the third way of getting a letter of invitation if you do not have a relative if you do not have a business that you can communicate with the third way is through conferencing another thing that you should assess yourself is with your travel history if you have enough travel history when I mean enough travel history, I'm not talking about Dubai or Ghana. I'm talking about um, well-established countries like the United States, um, France, UK, Germany. You know, these countries, if you have a good travel history, when you are submitting your visiting visa application, it is best to uh, make a photocopy of all the places you've traveled to. Show the stamps, show the visa um, stamps that you have on your passport make a copy of them and also attach those copy to your visa application do not only send your data page if you send only your data page um they will see that you do not have a travel history but if you have a travel history make a copy of all the places you've traveled to 
and also um, attach it to your visa application so that's the second thing you have to attach the first one is the letter of inv uh, invitation the second one is your travel history where the places you've traveled to all the copies should be attached during your application now another thing you should also know that you have to include in your visa application is your financial assets and your physical assets so if you have financial assets when i mean financial assets i'm not saying you should go and borrow money from somebody to put in your account for one month to just apply for the visiting visa i mean the visa officers already know that this is what people do so if you're thinking that that is going to help you you're just wasting your time because those are not the things they look at your financial assets they want to see the history of your financial assets so if you want to include your financial assets you have to put let's say a one-year bank statement yes a one-year bank statement showing the inflow and outflow of your account if you just go and print one month bank statement to add to your visa application of course they know that this one has borrowed the money <laughs> so you just have to put to really convince the visa officers that you are a serious person you have the money you have the financial assets you're not going there to go and be a burden to anybody you just want to come and visit your sibling or visit your relative or come for a conference or come for a business attach one year bank statement of your account and that bank statement should show the inflow and the outflow so the inflow let's say you're an employee you are working in a company they are paying you salaries let's say they are paying you three hundred thousand naira i'm using naira as an example now they are paying you that amount of money they should be seeing your bank statement from january february march april may showing how much is coming in into your account as your salary and then how much is going out and then the balance and any other investments you have let's say you have investments in treasury bills um fixed deposits all those financial assets must be added pension i don't think pension can be counted as financial assets when it comes to visiting visa maybe for immigration yes it is counted as a financial asset but for visiting visa pension or gratuity is not counted as financial asset the least um, bank statement you can use is six months but i personally i would say you should go for one year if you're really serious about getting um a visiting visa and you can also combine um, income let's say a family um, if you have a joint account you, you can use a combined joint account but I mean your spouse also needs to write a letter that yes this is you know part of your income or whether your financial assets is a joint whatever then another thing that you should also submit when you're submitting your visiting visa application is your physical assets so you need to show your landed property um, not just the document physical location as well you need to take a picture of your house take a picture of um, the location of your house if it is possible get a valuation report there are so many um, organizations that give valuation reports like uh, osas and osergi i think yeah i don't know i'm not sure i think that's their name yeah that's their name anyway so if you can get a valuation report of your properties to show the net worth of your properties a reliable valuation report that will show that you have enough physical assets then if you have a business the same thing too you should also take a picture of your business business environment show the picture of your office um, your certificate of incorporation your registration document your financial um, sorry your tax certificates if you pay taxes your tax certificates your business income statement you know you should show all those all those documents they are important because if you're just showing piecemeal documents the visa officer will just say this person is not serious so um i encourage you if you're going to it if you apply for a visiting visa you have to take it very seriously so you don't just um waste your time waste your energy apply for a visiting visa and get a refusal um so these documents are very important the next thing you should also show is your family so if you're coming to canada alone and you're leaving your family behind you have to take a picture of your family um your wife your children or your siblings and tell them these are the people you're leaving behind um you are well established you can't leave your family behind and then you're just coming to visit and return back to your country you know so these things if you show majority of these documents when you're applying for your visiting visa there is a 50 percent chance i'm using one 50 percent because at the end of the day there is a clause that says at the discretion of the visa officer reviewing your application it's at the discretion so at the, that clause then gives them the power to say 
even if you have provided all of these documents i can still refuse your vct visa application another thing is most people don't even write convincing letters and this is where um, immigration consultants play a very important role in writing a convincing letter of explanation to the visa officer to show the visa officer that you will return back to your home country so i encourage you um if you're going to apply for a visiting visa it's best to consult with a licensed immigration consultant rather than you know discussing with an agent that will package fraudulent documents for you i mean visa officers are smart they know the tricks that we play so don't just don't just think you can outsmart them it is best to deal with a licensed immigration consultant to write a detailed letter of explanation backing with so many things for you uh, before you submit your visiting visa application. I think I also need to add this tip here. Your employer has to write a reference letter stating that you are an employee of their company. And another thing is the, the employer has to be a very well established employer. An employer where they can just google the information online and they will see the employer's details so for people who do not you know have good employment like you just maybe you're working for a one-man business and the employer does not even have a website you know those things are the ones that make the visa officers feel that this person is not a serious person in this age every employer needs to have a website so if you are the type of person who is working somewhere where the employer does not have a website i mean it will be very difficult to convince the visa officers so um for those who are working in an a, a very established organization you just have to ask your employer to write a letter uh, stating that you are you've been employed blah 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 you're just going for your vacation you'll be coming back to continue your job you know that letter of reference it, it also adds anyway it also adds to your application um another thing is uh the number of years your employer has been in existence also counts um the kind of business deals that your employer does also counts that's if the business is into multi-million dollars it also counts so if you do not have these things in place it can also affect your visiting visa application if you know that you do not have all these things like you do not have them don't bother i mean don't just bother yourself because it's just a waste of time telling yourself that you want to go and apply for a visiting visa when you do not even have what it takes to apply for a visiting visa you're just you know giving them money and increasing the denial rate in your application and the more denials you get the more scrutiny your application um, will now have so i will encourage you it's better to assess yourself first assess yourself based on these parameters i've mentioned before i think i need to elaborate more on the conference as well um, as for the conference you also need to check yourself you can't just wake up to stay you're attending a conference you must have been a member of a certain association um, back in your home country you must have been participating in conferences you know online conferences different conferences networking you must have been traveling for different conferences even if you apply to a conference in canada um and you get a letter of invitation you also need to show to the visa officers that you have successfully attended let's say five ten conferences uh, prior to applying for a visiting visa to canada let's say you attended one conference in ghana you attended the next conference in uk in addition to that when putting in your application you have to also make reference to the conferences you have attended you have to show proof that you attended those conferences you have to put pictures of the conferences you attended show your flight tickets and all that if you were a speaker at the conference or the workshop you have to put those evidence you know they like to see evidence they want to see evidence evidence of you attending conferences you also have to show um websites indicating that there was an existing conference like that in maybe in ghana where they advertise the conference if there was a flyer you have to show the flyer as well you know you have to show all these documents when you're putting in your application so i have talked too much i am hoping that this video is useful to anybody who plans to visit canada um i don't want to talk too much because the time is going thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video Bye bye